Hello, hello, everybody. It's another beautiful day in the neighborhood, and we're still neighbors. Y'all, isn't this wonderful? It's just nothing nice and nothing better <coughs> than to be a neighbor. You know, especially if you know your neighbor, because I don't know any of my neighbors. I don't know none of them. I've been living here now. Well, I've been in this building for 11 years. Well, I think I do know maybe one or two uh, of my neighbors, but as for my next door neighbors and all that, mm, I don't even see them, and they don't see me, I guess, but... Nevertheless, I'm glad we are still neighbors. We still seeing each other and we're back again. But anyway, today, honey, I have a special guest. You all may have seen him on TV. Some of you may have ran into him in the operating room. I don't know, but we're going to soon find out. But anyway, honey, so without further ado, y'all, we're just going to go ahead on and start this wonderful show. So, ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Dr. Eugene Harris from the show, the hit show, Married to Medicines, y'all. Dr. Eugene, how you doing? Hey, Gary. How look are like, you? Look like you're in a damn helicopter. Where you at? No, I'm, I'm, I'm in my Jeep. You know, oh. you know the, uh, the, the, the transformer looking Jeep that I drive around on the show. Yes, Lord. <laughs> you know what? I'm like, okay. I was like, when they talk about Dr. Eugene coming on, I said, Dr. Eugene coming on, then we were supposed to have you on, I guess, last week or whatever. It was. I know. Right. I'm, I'm, so, I'm sorry, Gary. I was, I've been ripping and running in the hospital, and, and I finally yes, got some Lord. days off. Look, I didn't even shave. Oh, was, my like, God. You're rubbing. Like, oh, my God. You look like a thug. I know. I know. All this, all this gray. But I, oh they, my they, said, God. they said, Gary, want to get you on this line. I said, I can't, I can't say no again. Yeah, so. and, you know, and if you would have, I'd say the hell with him when I was seeing you in public again, I would just snub you. <laughs> so what's been going on, Dr. Eugene? I mean, you know, you're a, a medical doctor now. So tell me this. So you're a doctor. Are you an a OR doctor? Or are you what type of I, position you are? Let's let the people know this. Yeah, it. I am a trained emergency physician, which a lot of people are like, well, what is that? Do you have an office? I was like, no, this is my office. So I, I work in the in the ER. So I, yeah. I'm a, a jack of all trades. So if you were ever to go, not you, we, we're going to keep you, you healthy. But yeah. anybody else, you know, if you, you know, you're sick, throwing up, heart attack, chest pain, belly pain, you cut yourself um, or, you know, you, you, you get shot. You, well, unfortunately, you, you're having a stroke. I'm the guy oh, that you see first, you know, and if I can't handle it, then I call in specialists. Um, so I'm a jack of, of all trades. Yeah. So tell me, so Dr. Eugene, so I mean, so, okay, so that's your specialty. So you just would rather just work out of a hospital and not um, have your own practice or whatever? Well, so, and that's, that's, that's the thing that COVID's maybe done. I, I, I was always one of those people, I'm going to be an ER doctor for 30 years and I'm going to get my 30 year pin and, 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 and walk off into the sunset. But now, COVID has kind of changed the game up and, and a lot of the really good docs are like you know what i don't have to take this <laughs> you know yeah. so some of us are really jumping ship like a lot of the really good nurses have left yeah. a lot of the really good docs are looking for alternative um modes of income because you know with the pandemic you know a lot of the the you know basically we were initially telling people stay home and yeah. so these hospitals and these these big medical groups lost a lot of revenue and then they got to the point where they were like well we're gonna cut cut y'all hours you know, because it's not enough money to pay y'all. I'm like, wait a minute, we're in the middle of a pandemic. You can't cut us. This is the time yeah. that we need all hands on deck. Um, but you know, when the money dries up, people show their true colors. If you, if you oh, say huh. it that way, they sure damn <laughs> do. And this is funny though. You know, and you. I mean, growing up as a child, you know, I would always you would look at a doctor and y'all you know, had all this authority and stuff. But doctors go through the same shit like everybody else go through. Ab That's yes, crazy. sir. Crazy. Absolutely. That's I had crazy. I heard an administrator maybe about two months ago say we were like, look, there's not enough nurses. I, I don't even have all my rooms open. I'm seeing people from the waiting room. And she said, well, if, if more nurses quit, we'll just replace them. Whatever. Mm, see and like, oh, see, we're like, no, I don't have to take that. I'm too good. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm the LeBron. I'm the LeBron James of medicine. You know. All right. You better say that. that then. You better <laughs> let them know, honey, who you are, who you is, honey. Yeah. But so, uh, so, it, Looking into some other ways to diversify my time, put it that way. Yeah, but you know what? You're looking for some other ways, but the good thing about here, you got the show. So, mm -hmm. you know, you have the show, uh, Married to Medicine. Now, I mean, Dr. Harris, I'm calling you Dr. Harris, I call you Dr. Drew Jean. But, um, I mean, so I hope, you know, that's one way. But then, I guess, you know, it's interesting about doctors and nursing and all this a doctor want to be a damn rapper. A rapper want to be a basketball player. <laughs> Y'all went to, all oh, got all this education, and you don't know what the hell you want to be or do. I mean, it is crazy. I mean, I, I just, 
I don't understand it for the life of me. I mean, you know, growing back then, I mean, like I tell people, I'm from Port Arthur, Texas. We may have had two black doctors. Mm. And now here in Black Atlanta, huh, y'all, there's so many black doctors, this is just crazy. And then y'all have, you know, y'all got these positions and stuff, and then, but they still trying to treat you bad. You still got to go through all this mess. I just, I just don't understand it. It's crazy. Well, you know, you know, th- I'm, I'm, I'm always been the type that things happen for a reason. And, yeah. you know, God, God has always had me. And when yeah. one door closes, another opens. So I'm, I'm, I'm okay. Yeah. So tell me this, so Dr. Eugene, if, if there was something else that you could do besides being a doctor, what would you want to do? Well, and that's that's interesting. I've been talking about that a lot. And, you know, on the show, I, I one of my passions and my hobbies is cooking. You know, I'm not a yeah. trained chef in the least, but I could throw down with the best of them. I've, I've actually yeah. been in the kitchen with several chefs and they're like, oh, you actually know what you're doing. So I've been kicking around maybe some show ideas around the uh, the food world, yeah. um, you know, tr- food, travel, culture. Uh, so so we, we might have some good things coming. Yeah, and, and you know, right now you're in a position where you could damn do that. And, and nowadays, I mean, more black men are cooking more than the law allowed. Because I know definitely my daddy was definitely a good cook. My mama, she's a good cook. But my daddy, it's one thing that I like. My daddy used to make this great um, gumbo. He would make mm. a good seafood gumbo. And okay. honey, I'll never forget, the, um, Dr. Eugene, we had, um, he had oysters, shrimp, and crab meat in it. So we had it all made, and we were going to church that Sunday morning. When we got out of church, honey, that girl was starting to bubble. So mm. my dad said, hell no, I put too much money in this gun, but we're going to eat it. And we ate that gun. Well, I mean, we didn't die. I'm still here. <laughs> so, honey, but I don't blame him. Like, I'm wasting, you know, seafood spoils quickly. But yeah. uh, we we ate that gumbo. but he was a good cook, though. May he rest in peace. But um, mm. it's a lot of men, you know, that's doing And with you being on the show, maybe you ought to, um, you know, do a, a, a big dinner for all y'all on the show one day on the show, and that could um, introduce you to your cooking. Book yeah, well, 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 when the season starts to air, you'll you'll see some some good culinary things uh, from from me. And actually, my oldest son is getting into cooking early. Really? He's twelve. Oh, he's twelve, yeah. but he's he's very proficient in the kitchen. So we we gonna yeah. we gonna raise him in the way he should go. Yeah, he watch um what's, if he watch um not Hell's Kitchen that guy what's that Mad- name? Yeah, yeah, Master Chef. Yeah, he watch Master. Yeah. They got them little young kids. I'm like, how the hell they know how to do all that? Oh yeah, and the new season just started. There's there's a little black boy from from Atlanta. Yeah, I, I yeah, I well. saw him. So yeah, so y'all need to definitely, honey, if that's something you know, put him on there. You could be father and son, honey, cooks so or what have you. So that would be a good thing. So, and I would want to taste some. What's your specialty? What you like cooking the most? You know, uh, I I, I kind of do it all, Gary. I'm not really. Gonna lie. I'm I'm good on the grill. I I'm good with the seafood. Yeah. Uh, th- this weekend I'm making something called calbi. I don't know if you've ever ever had calbi. Yeah, it's Calbi is a Korean short rib that mm. you marinate in this this sauce for about two days, and then mm. you grill it and mop the sauce on it. When I, when I say it's one of the most addictive things you ever eat, how do you learn how to cook Korean food? I, you just I just read and learn it. Yeah, really. You know, as 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 a doctor, we love to learn. You know. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I put I put that that same intensity with whatever I do. Really. So did you um growing up did your parents I mean were were your parents good cooks or whatever my my, my 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 mother and all of her sisters are all very very good cooks um yeah. but I think I've I've surpassed them yeah uh, and and my mom is funny when she comes in town she's always looking to see what what seasonings I have and I, I'm blocking her yeah. I'm like, no 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 <laughs> yeah. I tell you I am not a cook you know what Dr. Drew, I don't even I may cook once every other month. Ooh, and, it's, and it's the I, same I, I thing not. that I and it's the same thing that I cook. I just not I I'll do um pork chops or mm. chicken, either one, but I'll put it in cream of mushroom soup. I have some wild rice and string beans and corn. That's it. That's okay. And that's that but that's okay. You know? Yeah. So that's all I know. I mean, I think if I put my mind to it, I could, but I, I notice and I see how a lot of people cook. I can't be doing all that damn cleaning up the kitchen after you get through. I mean, and while you're cooking it, I, it's just a mess. And I don't like a mess. So I mm-hmm. just, you know, so I go give me a hamburger. Well, 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 well Toya, Toya has has gotten me to clean as I cook. That's what they uh, say. Yeah, yeah, that that's help been helpful because I used to just make a bunch of pots and pans and be like, yeah. oh well, some, if you if you enjoy it, you'll clean up after me. But I, yeah. I I clean up for the most part now. Yeah, well that's good. Then well, you know, because I I'm just not there yet. But maybe one day, honey, I'll try. But. I like to cook, or I love to eat, but I'm not a big eater. But one thing I will say this too, though, I am not a damn foodie. 
I am sick mm. of all my coworkers being foodies. They're just foodies. Mm. I just don't think it makes sense. I think it's a lot of money. You're spending all that money on food? That's ridiculous. Well, well, that's that's why you got to learn how to cook it yourself. Exactly. Yeah, I guess so, you know, but I don't know. I mean, I, I like I said, I like to look at food and stuff like that, but I'm just <laughs> not there. It just, it, it does take time, though. And, and so it's got to be something that you actually enjoy. Yeah, I and, and, the, and I think I could enjoy it if I just maybe, because I know, honey, you have a big master kitchen. So here you got the space, honey. And you and, and I like to look at all the nice little um novelties on the cabinet, on the counter, and stuff and all the seasonings and spices that and on the roller and all that. That's all cute. And that <laughs> will make me want to cook. Cause I got it all at my beck and call. But the damn if I don't I've had to search for it and dig for the damn pepper and go through it. I don't want to cook because it's just too much trouble. But and I'm just lazy like that. So let's just keep it with it. So <laughs> Just stop lying. Anyway, moving on. Okay, so so Dr. Eugene, okay, uh, married to medicine. All right, so mm-hmm. what, so now, so what, how did you get on, how did y'all, you and um, First Lady tell you, how did y'all get on married to medicine, first of all? And do you, do you like the show? <laughs> well, well I'll, I'll answer that part first. I, I, I love our show. Um, outside of, you know, obviously the, the drama and the, the the fuss and then the makes up the breakups and the makeup again. Outside of that, we're still one of the only shows that has a all minority cast for the most part that yeah. is is about marriage. Um, yeah. You know, you don't really see a lot of shows where everybody's married. You know, even the housewives, they're like they they have them are married, <laughs> right? Husbands. But we're all married, um, and and we've had one divorce, and but it's still a, a great opportunity to be real with people about uh, the, the struggles of marriage, how the ups, the downs, um, a lot of the, you know, a lot of people have come up to Toya and I like, Hey, I really appreciate you talking about this subject or that subject, like finance and sex, um, because it's not a lot of people being real on TV about mm-hmm. real issues that everybody's going through. Um, mm-hmm. And so I, I still appreciate our show for that. Um, now, how did we get on it? It is is God put us on the show. I had to because because the yeah. circumstances were crazy. It's, it's I think another reason we've been successful is we all kind of already knew each other. Yeah, at least that that principal group. Like when I came out of residency, uh, it was my specialty training, and moved back to Atlanta. I already had a job lined up, but it wasn't going to start for like another month. But I already knew Dr. Damon because mm-hmm. he was about uh, about five years ahead of me. Um, in school. And so I reached out to him. He was a medical director in the hospital, you know, near Atlanta. I was like, hey, I got this job. It's starting up, but can I just do a couple shifts at your place until my main gig kicks in? He was like, sure. So that's how we met, um, you know, Dr. Heavenly, Dr. Damon. Uh, When we were getting ready to have kids, my wife originally went to Dr. Jackie um, and she actually fired Dr. Jackie (laughs) because they they didn't get along patient doctor wise. And we ended up going to another OBGYN, but that's how we met Dr. Simone, Dr. Jackie, because they were in practice together at the time. So that core group, oh, and then Mariah. Um, yeah, the creator. I, I Absolutely. <laughs> we can never leave her out. Um, I actually was a medical director at a hospital around 2009, um, and I hired Dr. Aiden. Oh, okay. And just by chance, I was like, hey, I, I hired this guy. He's from Bang- he's Bangladeshi. He's married to a Black girl. And Toy was like, I was at a at a party and met a black girl married to a Bangladeshi. I was the same person. Ended up being the same. Okay. So so it was just like this. It just happened so organically that when Mariah was like, "Hey, I got an idea. I want to do this kind of." At first, it was a documentary. We said no. Then she said, "No, I'm gonna turn it into a, a a a you know a reality show." We said no again. And really? then it was almost a year later that she came back one more time and was like, "I think y'all be perfect for this." And we were like, "Okay." Because we were like, you know, you know, you only live once, you know, so yeah. why not? <laughs> you know? Exactly. I mean, because I love the show. But you know what, though, um, Dr. Eugene, I'll be telling, you know, like some of the housewives, I'll tell them all the time. My thing is this, and this is just me with this show. I tell them all the time, I say, listen, honey, I don't need to see no more divorces, number one. I don't mm-hmm. want to see y'all divorce and all that stuff. But as for the women together wise, I tell them, look, girl, you tell, okay, say for instance, I'm just using, say Kiki, Kiki, you tell um, Mumu, look, bitch, I'm going to curse you out in five minutes, but we're going to go shopping at the end of the damn show. It's a, <laughs> just a, it's a show. 
Just get your damn mm-hmm. money and shut up. But these people yeah. get on these shows, they fight, they hate one another, and stuff. It's not that serious. Well, to me, it's not that serious, you know, because it's yeah. like my job. Well, and, and I think, I think uh, again, one of the, the differences between our show and maybe some of the, um, uh, you know, the hip the lot, housewives. Hip and those, you know, so we, like I said, we knew each other. So it's, yeah. some of this stuff is real. Oh, no, 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 no. I know not some of the shit is real. I know a lot of it is real. Yeah. It's a lot of yeah. stuff real on those damn housewives, too. Yeah, like, I, I, I just... think early, early on, like, especially season one, some of the stuff, when I look at the way it was edited, I'm like, that doesn't really make sense that that person's mad for that reason. I know what really happened. And they're, we're mad because we knew each other already. Like, like, don't play me on TV. I knew you for the yeah. last five years. Don't do that to me. Yeah. <laughs> you know? But that's so, the sad thing. Them damn producers, though. You get them mess-ass producers, and they start stirring up some shit. And then before you know it, y'all hating each other. I mean, just in case. I mean, for the example, Mariah. Mariah created the damn show. Now she's not even on the show. The same shit she created, she ain't on it. For whatever reason, I don't know, and I don't have you don't have to tell me. But I mean, it's just, you know, <laughs> honey, yeah. So it, it's just, I mean, I just don't understand it. I'm like, Lord, how could that happen? But it happens though, but it's it's a, it's it's entertaining. And you know, people ask me all the time, do you think that's real, bitch? I know it's real. I know uh, it's first of all, it's almost like to me, you know, they they give scenarios. Okay, Dr. Eugene, you remember that day when um, Dr. Jones told you that he didn't like your ass? Yeah, I remember. Okay, go. And now you go and start talking about <laughs> why he didn't like you. That's how these things happen. That's how these yeah. shows, I've been on shows. I know how this stuff is going. And it's just crazy, but I, I just I just don't want it, though. I hate to see it. And, and like some of those other shows, honey, not, not y'all's show, it's prone, it's set up for divorce, to make people divorce. Well, you, but you know, the funny thing, Gary, is... I, I tell Toya all the time, to a certain degree, at least with our relationship, it's been somewhat therapeutic for us because, Ugh. especially for you know, like when we do the green screen where we're both sitting next to each other, yeah, uh, talking to those those like eight hours of sitting there having to answer questions, we we we've gotten very deep and have have used some of that as almost a counseling session. Like it's it's a nice way to vent and be heard because you're, you know obviously you're on camera. So you can't over talk each other. It's not like an argument, but you yeah. can really get out your your real, true, honest feelings sometimes. And I think it's it's been one of the reasons why we've we've had the longevity we've had in our relationship because we 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 stay very open and honest with each other. Yeah, um, I've seen some of the times. I mean, Tall, you can sometimes get out of her box, honey, but you kind of a little abrasive. You get a little abrasive at times. <laughs> okay, now nah. you get a little abrasive. He like okay. I can tell when you're serious. And so, well, and, 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 and Gary, a little, a little, uh, a little nugget for the next season. This is one of the first seasons coming up that the men got a little loud with each other. And I ain't gonna say what man. Oh shit. Uh, but but there was there was a little bit of of oh uh, lord the, the the women rubbed off on us just a little tiny bit yeah but but but, but, but we resolved it like men and I, oh I good because I don't you'll, 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 yeah you'll be you yeah. it'll be very entertaining this yeah because I don't need I could like I said I like all of y'all honey so oh, yeah. I don't need none of that but it was one scene I never get honey it was a bathtub scene when you were in a bathtub and um you kind of got yeah. a little abrasive. <laughs> Wait, I think I got a bracelet. I, I think you gotta kinda, you know, you kinda got a little bracelet with Toya. I mean, it's kinda, oh. you know, you you, you kinda had, you know, you, you normally the calm one. And well, that, I was also you know. out of my if if anything came off abrasive, I was so out of my element. You know, because I I'm a big boy. And yeah. I don't wanna be in no tub with no bubbles with, well, with just... on national <laughs> So I was not comfortable that day. Oh, all. really? <laughs> oh, hell no, Gary. Yeah, now, I, I, I will say I've, I've lost about 30 pounds since yeah. then. Yeah. So I probably would have felt a little bit better now, but that's still not my, my comfort zone. Yeah. Because I was like, yeah. okay, so it was like, all right, so anything for TV. But um, <laughs> but you, 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 were, uh, you were, like I said, you was a kind of little, but you kind of, you came back and, you, you know, you redeemed yourself. I said, oh, Dr. Eugene getting. Mm. I'm going to have to rewatch that one, Gary. I'm going to have to yeah, rewatch that. You know, and it was something else too. Um, it was another one of those scenes that I remember, you know, when you were. Um, you just picking out all my faults, Gary? Huh? You just picking out all, you just picking no. out, out, out all my faults, Gary? No, I just, since we're talking, <laughs> and I just, since I watched the show, I said, okay, yeah, 
whatever. And you know, and, and the thing, like I say, we do because I know I get on TV and on the radio and whatever, and I'll say something because I don't care, you know. But I just felt for <laughs> you. I said, oh, mm -hmm. I'm saying that, you know. But you said, you know, you it's whatever, you know. It's just, you know, it's reality. It is reality. You know, it was That's reality. Right. So you were being real about the situation and stuff. So that was a good thing. But also, so Dr. Eugene, tell me this. I mean, and you know you may can answer this question. You may not. So who on the show you don't like? <laughs> <laughs> uh, st stay tuned for the next season. Uh, <laughs> who no, does I, Dr. Eugene not like? That's what you I, know. I, I, would, I, would, I would say there are people do, uh, that I prefer. You know, like I, I really love Cecil Simone. They've, they've taken on like a really... Uh, big brother, big sister position for Toya and I. Mm -hmm. um, so that those are people that we hang out with outside of the show. Oh, okay. uh, and and actually, uh, you know, maybe a, 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 another little hint. There's another couple that Toya and I hadn't been hanging out with that we will be hanging out with more this coming season. So, oh. okay, so we gonna stay tuned for that. But I'm, I'm but I'm not. I I wouldn't say I I don't dislike anybody. No, you don't. You don't dislike nobody. Yeah, it's but just, there are people that I prefer to hang out with. Yeah, you prefer, and that's good. Yeah. It's just yeah. like honey, I prefer vanilla over strong chocolate, but mm -hmm. I still like chocolate. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. But that's good. But but some, but, but some some of the chocolate on our show is a little bitter. For me. Yeah. <laughs> but but you see, but Doctor Eugene, like I said, go back to it. I want y'all to all get along. I just, I mean, it's just, and I know deep down inside, honey. That y'all know, y'all just, you know, everybody have to get along or what have you, eventually or what have you. But I don't know. I just, I can't say, I, I don't know, but I'm just not going to say anything. So I'm just <laughs> keep it going like that. So, but that's a good thing. So, so Dr. Eugene, so tell me this. So, okay, so y'all here in Black Knight. So you like Atlanta? Y'all, you like Atlanta? And I'm from your own. Oh, I, I, I love Atlanta. I, I, I'm from DC originally. Uh, born so you from some other Negroes, and you just. Oh yeah, oh yeah. But I, I've been in Atlanta since 2000 for the most part, so I'm 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 basically from here. Yeah, you know, I've I'm, been here 11 years. I ain't from here. <laughs> <laughs> and when I go back to DC, DC is so different now than than when I was when I was there. Uh, really? Yeah. Besides, you know, my mom's house, it just doesn't even look the same. So yeah. it, it's just like me with Dallas. When I go back to Dallas, I'm from Port Arthur, Texas, but I live I live in Port Arthur <laughs> and in Dallas. But when I go back to Dallas, it's so white. I'm like, dog, it's so white out oh, there. Yeah. yeah I didn't want to say it. I didn't want to oh, say it. Oh, yeah, I said it. I said about <laughs> Dallas. It's so but, white. Yeah. But now that, now that you said it, so I went back for uh, a cousin's wedding about four, four or five years ago. And there was one area we were going into. And I was, I remember, my mom worked at Howard University and we lived right outside of DC in Maryland. And the way to go home from Howard to, to Maryland. We would go all the, the straightest way is go through this bad neighborhood. We would go oh. all the way around, uh, but we were going to this wedding and we were going into that area. I was like, "Why are we over here? Like, you know, my cousin got money. Why are we at the wedding over here?" We got off the exit and it's white folk jogging and sitting outside at little cafe tables, sipping whatever they were sipping. Tea. I was like, "Whoa!" I was like, "This is not the same." So that I mean, the gentrification. I mean. It makes the oh, place yeah. look wonderful, but I just feel bad. Where did those people that live there, where did they go? You know? That's just like over here, honey. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm over here. I live here downtown, but the hood is right around the corner, baby. These girls gentrified it. They said, now nah, we want y'all to come back. <laughs> they can't come mm -hmm. back because hell, they made it so doggone expensive and build up stuff. It's just crazy. Dallas is just, Dallas is just I'm like, well, where the black people went? And I'm like, right. I knew I hung with somebody when I lived there. Where are they? And so, I mean, it's crazy, but, you know, it's a sad situation. But, honey, gentrification ain't no joke, honey. And if you ain't got no coins, baby, they're going to put you up under the bridge. Because that's, oh, yeah. that's where you're going to live, honey. So Yeah, and when, and when, and when this, you know, like, if you look at the history of Atlanta, how the city planners had this, this multi-year plan to transform the area, like all of the homes, the projects, mm -hmm. they gave those people vouchers and moved them either to Macon or Clayton County. Oh, really? That's that's where all those people, that, you know, Bankhead, you know, Brady Homes, Carver Homes, all those people actually moved south. The people that were in Clayton County, which used to be a white county, by the way, it's mm -hmm. not now. Yeah, that's oh, what yeah. they say. I Th heard those it people live, they live in Peachtree City, Noonan. Yeah. You know, so, and, and so I, I actually learned some of the history of Atlanta because it kind of explains the hospital setup also. Mm -hmm. 
uh, yeah. because, you know, for instance, you know, Southern Regional, which is in Clayton County, used to be a very top notch hospital. Mm-hmm. But they're not. But now they they're they're a community hospital is supposed to have suburban patients. They've got the Grady patients now. Oh, that's who. Uh, that's who. That, that all those people now live in Clayton County, and the hospital is kind of upside down. Um, yeah. So just know, knowing the history of a place actually makes you understand what's going on neighborhood by neighborhood too. Grady up the street from me, so I'm like, okay, I just passed by that girl, but. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> you know. I, I I trained at Grady when I was in med school. I yeah. was right there. But you know what's so crazy though, Doctor Eugene? These damn crazy Negroes out here got on, tattoos on their damn body. I'm a Grady baby. Bitch, I wouldn't want everybody to know that. <laughs> and they put all that on their damn bodies and stuff. I have a coworker that got Grady baby. I'm like, oh, okay, girl. Well, you know that's 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 a land of pride. That's yeah. a well, huh? That's a uh, I guess okay. That's their pride, honey. I'm a stamp that <laughs> Grady baby. Well, anyway, right. well, Dr. Eugene, I thank you so much um, for stopping by, you know, taking out of your busy day. I mean, because you could have been doing something else, honey. You and Toy, you could have been somewhere, honey, um, in the Bahamas or Paris shopping or doing something, honey. You and Toy, <laughs> all her fabulosity or what have you. But you stopped by, so I really appreciate it. So. I appreciate it, Gary. Thank yes. you for having me. Yeah, so you take care, and um, so so do you know? Or can you say it when we could look forward to um watching um real um Married to Medicine? It's coming, so we do, we we wrapped up uh the principal filming. We're doing some green screen stuff now, to kind of wrapping up, and now the editor is gonna do what they do, and we'll we'll see what they come up with. <laughs> yeah, well, honey, I'm gonna be glued to the TV, and I'm sure all of y'all gonna be glued, honey. That's Married to Medicine, and most of the people on the show are doctors, you know, are married to a doctor, or just got oh, yeah. a husband. So yeah, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Dr. Eugene, thanks again. You have a great day Thank and a you. better tomorrow. And tell Toya and the kids, honey, hello. Thank and you, invite me to one of those cookouts, Damon, when y'all have I, one I, of those I, cookouts. I, when, we got you. When you're cooking some oxtails and chitlins. No, I don't do the, I don't do the chitlins, but my oxtails are fire. I don't eat that neither. I don't eat neither. I just say that because that's the black um, anthem. I don't eat neither one of them. No. Yeah, no. You, you would eat my oxtails and be like, Sucking on the bone. You would. I, you I would. never saw a damn meat on there. Everybody had meat. I don't see meat I, on I, them. I, I, I get the big oxtails. I don't get them little tiny ones. Nah. Yeah, I, and I, then I they're expensive you. too. Hell, you could have bought the whole damn cow. But <laughs> <nevertheless>. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> you, you take care. All right, you too. Bye bye. All right, y'all. Thank you so much for tuning in, honey. Don't forget now, honey, if you like what we, uh, what you heard or saw, honey, click right here. If you don't like it, click right here, too, because you go click right here. And don't forget to tune in, and you can watch Gary C. wherever Spotify is hosted. So that's Gary C. Okay, have a great day, and we'll do this again on manana. Oh, that's what. Is manana me next week? Oh, well, all right. Bye. <laughs>